All right, a hey, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash, dub honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you I came out there, pushing his word with all truth and sincerity, and to all you believers out there who believe in the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abai from the GMS Houston camp. And I just want to come back with a, you know, um, quick lesson of um, something that's, you know, been on my spirit. You know, we think about certain things, you know, in our day-to-day -day life, certain things we commit to video and certain things we just keep it to ourselves. you know, um, within our own meditation, you see, and, you know, just build upon it, you know, um, you know, within our own thoughts or whatnot. But, um, you know, this is something I've been thinking about, you know, through the spirit, Lord willing, our prayers are edifying lesson. You know, um, a lot of probably tired of the lesson, uh, consider the wilderness during our pilgrimage, man. You know, consider the wilderness during our pilgrimage. You know, meaning what? There's going to come a time, man. I'm going to get that scripture first. There's going to come a time where we're going to have to become pilgrims on the earth. You ain't going to have no just home to go to after work. You know, during Jacob's trouble, you you at your house every day while the, 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 the world breaking, you know, all shit hitting the fan in your neighborhood and you feel me your city your state wherever you at you feel me shit hitting the fan everywhere else but you you got you kicking back still watching tv in your house you know going to the refrigerator getting juice man you see we ain't gonna have that comfort that some of us may of us may have now man where you can relax and kick back and drink you some some wine or something no we gonna become pilgrims doing jacob's trouble we gonna be on the move in other in other words man you know Going from here to there, from there to here. You see, moving around, man. And within us moving around, within us on that pilgrimage, right? What I was meditating on, we have to consider the wilderness, meaning what? When we came out of Egypt, right? That was a uh an an example of a pilgrimage. We didn't have no just specific place we can just chill. It was moving around. It was going here, going there. We'll, we'll make a pit stop, you know, get some little, you know. T tense up chill out but within that you have to remember israel was complaining that whole time we're about moses what a fool that I'm hungry my my children about to die you see and they was tempting the lord man because remember tempting the lord tempting the lord remember it said well we ain't supposed to tempt the lord first and foremost but an example of tempting the lord is what unbelief Cause it says, let me get this real quick. Let me get this real quick. The law of willingness uh, makes sense and it uh, come out, you know, the way I was meditating on it. But real quick, there's Hebrews 11 and six. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Talking about the most high, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the most high must believe, right? Must believe that he is. <clears throat> and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, man. So, hey, we got to believe that the Most High is. That's his name, Yahweh. He is. He can do all things. He is in all things, man. Anything is possible with the Lord, man. You see? So, if you don't believe you're going to get fed, that's a way of you tempting the Lord. You don't, so you don't believe the Lord can feed you? That's unbelief. You tempting him. <laughs> you see? And that's what Israel did in the wilderness, man. So, when we're on our pilgrimage, we can't be like, man, fuck, man. You know? Man, we about to die. The Lord ain't about to feed us. No, that's tempting the Lord. You see, we got to remember to keep keep our wits about ourselves, man. Hey, Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge going to have to be the stability of our times, man. You see, we're going to have to remember the words of the Lord that he said he going to feed us. That he said um, we're going to be protected from, like Job 5, from the, all the six troubles, man. And in the seven, no evil shall touch us. You know, in the, in the silver wall, silver uprest, uh, 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 unrest, you see. Uh, and when Trump supporters start going around shooting niggas and niggas going around stealing and, you know, killing niggas and Mexicans and Asians, you see? When all hell break loose, we got to have faith that we ain't going to be in the midst of that. Now, we going to be in the midst of it, but those things ain't going to touch us. Like a, a two-third nigga, he going to you know, shot in the head during the civil uh, unrest. But the law going to make a way for us, man. We have to remember these things, and there's many more of them. You see many more of them, man. But let's get to the scripture, the... Uh, like brothers be saying the feature scripture, right? The second edge of 16. Let me see. Second edge of 16. And straight to the point. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to start up a little bit. Verse 37, it says, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son. Within two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb, which pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment, right? And we see these plagues come upon the earth, man. You know, hey, we expecting uh, uh, some, some, some shit to pop off after these elections, you know, hopefully... You know, something happened, you know, Lord willing, you see, but we expect day to day life to change, man. And the plagues ain't go slack. The closer we get to being delivered, the the more painful these things going to be and the more back to back they're going to be just like a woman with them contractions, man. But it says, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. So when these things happen, the next verse says, oh, my people. Hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. You see, so during these evils, we ain't gonna just be comfortable, man. You going home and you sleep in your bed while gunshots outside and sirens and people screaming, people getting raped, and you just in the <laughs> in your house sleeping. You see. In a little fetal position, man. No, we gonna have to be pilgrims going from here to ha from here to there, running. You see, right? But the thing is, let's go to Numbers fourteen. Let's get an example on what not to do, right? We have to. Hey, that's why what Romans fifteen and four says. The things that was written the fourth time was written for our learning. We seen the way the the unbelieving Israelites was acting, the things they were saying in 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 the wilderness on their pilgrimage. We have to remember that's not what to do. Right, but we gotta follow the ones like uh, you know, the mindset of Moses. He believed, you see, uh, Joshua and Caleb. They believe, right? Believe the Lord gonna provide. Don't lose the faith in that time. Remember, we still gonna have to apply. <clears throat> we gonna have to apply what we know in that time. All the stuff we've been learning now and, and practicing. That's gonna be game time to put it on display, man. You know, it can't just be throw everything out the out the window in that time because you might be hungry, because you might be tired or scared and, and lost belief, man. No matter what come our way. And Lord willing, you know, we do endure, man. But this is Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Let me see. And I'll start at 1. Numbers 14 and 1. It says, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night because they was crying, talking about, man, we seen giants, we scared. You see? Same thing. You, what, losing faith because Esau will come in like a flood? Remember, don't think, don't be scared because he going to come in like a flood. Think about that standard that, <clears throat> that's going to be lifted when he do come in like a flood, man. There's two ways you can go about this situation. Either believing in the Lord or not believing in the Lord, man. Either trusting it with your heart, Bashim Yahushai said what's going to happen. The protection he said was going to come our way. Or I'll just lose all faith in that when, when we get in this situation. Now, again, it's easier said than done. But you remember, it's what it says, um, roughly paraphrasing, but it's power in the tongue. Aren't we speaking the kingdom of heaven into existence? Well, speak that into existence, man. Right? Believe you're going to get through them times, man. Speak that into existence. You always go about talking, I don't know, it's going to be scary, I don't know. You coming back with you, you starting off with a bad report. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let me see. I'm going to go to chapter th uh, numbers 13 because you had some of the spies who went check out the land uh, of, you know, Canaan at the time, which is the land, which is the land of Israel. You know, Moses told them, go check it out. Let me know, you know, what was over there, who over there. They came back with a scary report, man. Right. And that's going to lead us into chapter 14. But uh, this numbers 13, let me see where I'm going to start at. 17, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, go get ye up this way southward and go up into the mountain, right? And see the land, what is it? And the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak or few or many. So Moses told them, go search it out and let me know what's up. Right? Verse 26, and they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation and the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land where thou sent us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people 
be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak uh, there, the Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south, and the Hittites and Jebusites and Amorites dwelt in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwelt by the sea and by the coast of Jordan, right? So they, man, they were big and tall, but it says, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. This is the man who had the right mindset, right? This is this is the mindset to have during the pilgrim, pilgrimage, man. We are able to overcome this. Yahweh Shai said, um, be of good cheer. He overcame the world, right? You see? So when we get in situations, believe we can overcome it. And it's not of us, but it's through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's the only way out. Remember, it said, Yahweh Shai said, he will keep us from the hour of temptation, man. Right? It says, um, but the men that went up with him, now this this the unbelievers, said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. Think about that for these times. Esau coming. Remember, his blessing is the sword. His blessing is the sword, man. He gonna have tanks and drones, military. Remember, he called the hammer of the earth. So it's gonna look like they're stronger than us. So two-thirds and unbelievers, you see even the ones in these other camps who ha haven't been prepping themselves for this time. Remember, it says 2nd Edge 13, make you ready to the battle. Right now, we're getting ourselves ready for the battle, man. But you have IUIC who worry about getting married right now and they're doing marriage video promotions in slow motion. You see? Come on, man. You got camps worried about having, you know, sex on the Sabbath and doing radio shows. They not making themselves ready to the battle. So in those times, they're going to feel what Esau go come with. Because they wasn't prepared. Let's read it. It says, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land. You see? Which they had searched and unto the children of Israel saying, the land which through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the peoples that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there, well, and there we seen giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. You see, so they gave a scary report. And from giving that scary report, now we go into chapter 14 and 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses. So they let fear get the best of them, man. <laughs> you feel me? Fear got the best of them. So they started murmuring. After the Lord showed them miracles and took them out of Egypt, seen a chariot, you see, they still back though in a time of fear, they started murmuring. They lost the faith. Now, they could have easily said, man, shit, we just came out of Egypt. The strongest, you feel me, kingdom in, in our time. And look what the Lord did to them, shit, Pharaoh and his army, we just seen them. You know, uh, the Lord drawn them in the sea. It could have easily been said, man, them people ain't nothing. And hey, well, it was easily said. That's why Caleb said it, man. We are able to overcome them because he just remembered what the Lord did for him. But they forgot that that fast. Going into what I want to touch on, consider the wilderness do, during our pilgrimage, man. We can't forget what we what the apostles uh been been teaching us, been building us um uh, up to get ready for this time. We can't forget that, man. You see? You go on a whole week of practice, you running the plays, you see? Running the plays, and then the game, you forget your plays, man. Right? Well, guess what? The scriptures is our playbook. That's why I said wisdom and knowledge still be the stability of our time. This was going to keep us stable, but you have to have it on your mind in order to even, you feel me? Be stable. Right? That's why I said be rooted and grounded in your Hawashai. If you rooted and grounded... Whatever come your way, you're going to stick to what you know, man. Yeah, that how was shot. I said what? Um, he that a wise man built his house upon a rock. Who is that rock? Yeah, how was shot. Then it's, don't the scripture says the word was made flesh. So we built ourselves, us being a house upon these scriptures, being your how was shot, man, upon what's written therein. So when the rains come, the floods come, the winds blow, which is symbolic for the destruction of things we got to go through. We're going to stay to what we know. That's why it says we're going to follow the land, whatsoever he go off, man. Right? No matter what we go through. In the concentration camp, guess what? You still following that land. You still applying what you know. Doing a family, you still applying what you know. You see? Right? 
But let's get back to it. It says, verse 2, And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Why would God, uh-oh, uh-oh, now they, now, they, now they questioning the most high. <laughs> you feel me? <clears throat> so like it, man. You know, this I got me getting a little cold. It's all good. But <clears throat> you see, now they questioning the most high. Right? Now convert that over to our time. You like, okay, the Lord woke us up. We Israelites. He said, we ain't going to go through this. We ain't going to go through that. But troops might kick in your door and grab you and your woman up. And you telling your wife in the back of the concentration camp van, Man, we ain't of the elect, cause God said he was gonna protect his elect. Why would he if we were the elect, why would he let them people grab us up? No, what you no. It's two ways to think. You could think, well, I ain't elect. Why would God do this? Or you can say, tell her, hey, don't trip. Tell your wife, don't trip your children, don't trip. Hey, look, the Lord, remember, we have to go through stuff. Psalms 91. That's the whole reason of him doing miracles to save us out of these things. He put us in situations to get saved out. He put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire to save them out of the fire. Daniel in the lion's den to save them out of the lion's den, man. So we go go through things so the law will save us out of those things, you see? But not to question him in these times. Remember, consider the wilderness doing our pilgrimage, man. Consider what the unbelievers did so we know what not to do. Let's get back to it. I don't want to run, but it says, And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Why would God... That we had died in the land of Egypt. Or what God we had died in his woods. And so why, what God trying to do? You see? Why God ain't just let us die in Egypt then? He brought us out here just so we could die in the wilderness? You see it says, And wherefore have Yahweh, because it's all caps, wherefore had then it, <laughs> the nerve to use the Lord day. Then it, it says, Wherefore have Yahweh brought us unto this land? To fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, <laughs> like we've just said, right? It says, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Come on, man. Come on. You in Jacob's trouble. You see? On the move on your pilgrimage. You said, man, fuck that. Look, man, look, the most high put me in a situation. He wasn't supposed to do this. You know? Now, who are our captains in these times? Man, the apostles and elders, man. You see? That's who we being led by. That's who Yahweh Bashim Yahushai set up to lead us. Now you get in the time, you like, man, look, I ain't about to listen to that no more. All that stuff you didn't learn, you threw it out the window. Now you want to return back into Egypt. And what's going to be that way of returning back to Egypt? You're going to take that chip, man. You see? You're going to take that chip. That's the only way you're going to get by the society, right? You got to take the chip. That's the way in doing Jacob's trouble for you to return back to Egypt. You got to take the chip, man. So it says... Let us make us a captain and, and let us return unto Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were with them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the, congregate, all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If Yahweh delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us and a land which flowed with milk and honey only rebel not against Yahweh. come on man only rebel not against the lord and unbelief is a way of rebelling against the lord unbelief is one of the first signs of rebelling against the lord man because remember what we started off with he that come to the most high must believe that he is must believe that he is man you must believe that the Lord is able to take you out of any situation that you in. Well, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Let's snag it. One of my favorite scriptures, man. These go be one of the scriptures to remember in doing a pilgrimage, right? These, this is like, you know, like to say a comfort scripture. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, it says, There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. We go be on a pilgrimage just like the whole world go be on a pilgrimage, man. Mainly America. So the scripture is saying we're going to be going through things that everybody else is going through. Right? It says, there have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's the difference. But the Most High is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will, with the temptation, also make your way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The Most High ain't going to give you nothing that you can't handle, man. Now, you might get in a situation, don't think you can handle it. But remember, the Lord know all of us better than we know us. We might not think we can handle it, but the Lord will put us through it. And we get through it. You feel me? Then you realize, oh, okay, 
Now, and shit, that we that's happening now. We and brothers in certain situations go through certain things, and the Lord get us through. We like, damn, I ain't even know I can, you know, get through that. Now the Lord, that had to be the Most High, man. Well, guess what? When you get in Jacob's trouble, don't think, man. I ain't read this in the scriptures. I ain't, I ain't, you know, you get into a situation. I ain't read this, no. <laughs> you know, come on, man. But going back to that numbers, and Lord willing, is making sense. I'm about to wrap it up. Numbers fourteen and nine. Only rebel not. Ye against Yahweh, neither fear ye the people of the land, right? It says, For they are bread for us, their defense is departed from them, and Yahweh is with us, fear them not. Come on, man. That's the mindset we should have in the pilgrimage. Now, of course, we in the in the flesh, right? We're gonna get you know spooked at certain points, and somebody pop out running after you, scared, running and sweating. You see. Yeah, man, you, of course, when the flesh, we go jump at certain things, but the whole point as in getting fearful and losing your faith. You see? Getting fearful and denying your Hawa Bashim, your Hawa Shai. Getting fearful and taking a chip. You see? Right? Let me see what else it got. All right, that's pretty much it, you know. You know, the point, the point made, the point made, I'm going to uh, end it off on this. Well, I hope, Lord, what an point is, you know, made, but it's, it's a little bit more to go on that, um, that numbers, but, you know, but this is, uh, Hebrews 4, and, uh, let me see, I'm going to start at 1, it says, let us therefore fear, right, let, and not talking about fearing Esau, fearing man, no, fear the Lord, fear us falling out of this truth. You see, have fear of that, man. It says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. And any of you should seem to come short of it. Hey, think about that. And the ones who didn't believe, <clears throat> the, the Lord killed them. Matter of fact, let's go back to that real quick. I'm going to. They, they stopped believing. They was murmuring the Lord killed their ass, so they weren't even able to go into the land of milk and honey. So guess what? You in Jacob's trouble and, and you fearing, acting like them, doing a the pilgrimage, guess what? You might not be able to go into the chariot. <laughs> you see? Especially if you take the chip. Right? But let me get that real quick. This is Numbers 14 on what the Most High told us. So the Most High like, oh, okay. Right? You want to complain? You want to murmur? You want to ask me why? All right. So that's what he said. Um, numbers 14 and 26. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, save Yahweh, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Man, that's heavy. That's heavy, man. I'm the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah allows us to go back to this. That's heavy because look, that's going into remember the, the 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 mouth, the tongue is a strong thing. You can speak something to existence, either life or death. Woo! Come on, man. Either life or death. So everything they were saying, man, the Lord brought us out here to die. Man, the Lord, we ain't go, he ain't gonna feed us. Man, us and our children go die. So the Lord said, Oh, well, look, the things you were saying, guess what? I'm gonna do that now. Let's read it again. So like I'm a little excited too. <laughs> it says, verse 26. It says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, save Yahweh, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcass shall fall in the wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward which have murmured against me so everybody from 20 years old and up whoever was talking shit it says doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which i swear to make you dwell there i ain't gonna bring y'all bring y'all into the land in other words i ain't gonna bring y'all into that salvation everybody from 20 on up I ain't bringing you into the salvation. I ain't going to let you see the salvation. You see, you're going to die right here in the wilderness where you was complaining that, man. Consider the wilderness during our pilgrimage, man. Right? In that time, look for look for hope, man. Look for the salvation of the Lord. Right? It's a scripture. Um, 
uh, man, let me see, Lord willing enough, I can snag it. It's something like the expectation of the righteous is only good. Let's see. Hold on, let me try to find it real quick. I know it's in Proverbs, though. It's like it. All right, here we go. The Wadi Al Bashima shot is Proverbs 10 and 28. It says, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. So, what's some you hope? They're going back to faith. You see? You hoping for something. When you get in a situation, concentration come, you hoping that the Lord save you all. During the family, you hoping that the Lord feeds you, right? It says, the hope of the righteous shall be glad. Is what the Lord going to do it. It says, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. If you expect the negativity, you're going to get that. Hey, you, what you going to reap what you sow. Whatever you putting out, you're going to get back. If you putting out faith, the Lord going to reward you for that because you believed in him. If you putting out death, you're going to be like the two thirds. You see? Right? I'm going to read that again. It says, Proverbs 10 and on. Um, I'm going to go back to that. Proverbs 10 and 28. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish, man. You see? And that's the point on that, man. But I'm going to end it with this Hebrews, you know? I'm glad we went back to that, man. So whatever you believe in and speaking in that time, the Lord going to will, hey, surely give it to you, man. Whatever his will be, of course. But I'd rather speak speak positivity, man. I'd rather speak belief. I'd rather look for the miracles, man. You see? Come on. Just like when Egypt came, uh, Israel came out of Egypt and got up to the sea and Pharaoh them. I did a lesson on that not too long ago and Pharaoh on me running up. They lost faith again. <laughs> they, lo they lost faith again. Hey, well, look, Pharaoh then was coming in like a flood, right? You see? Pharaoh then was coming in like a flood, just like Esau go come in like a flood, him and his army. Israel talking about, man, we about to die. Moses said, man, chill out and see the works of the Lord. You see? Come on, man. But this Hebrew was full. And two, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So Israel can hear, but that don't mean they believe. They can believe. Yeah, you can hear and agree with it. You see? Yeah, you can hear and agree that, yeah, I believe the so-called white man of the devil. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, okay. But then you start talk, talking about the chariots and start talking about your shy. Start talking about you feel me? We have slaves in the kingdom. They they don't have the faith in that man, right? All they don't have a mind to believe is actually gonna happen. But it says, "For we which have believed, right? But we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, right? I'm gonna hop down it to to verse." Uh, Nah, it says verse 8. For if Yahweh, which is Joshua, talking about what we we're just, you know, reading. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterwards spoken of another day. Because, right, we still went in captivity after that. But when Yahweh come, right, the top Yahweh, <laughs> you know, because jo Joshua and Yahweh had, you know, same name. But this is going to be our ultimate rest. It says, therefore, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of the Most High. For he that is entered into his rest have also ceased from, ceased from his own works as the Most High did from us. It's the point. Let us labor therefore to enter into their rest. We're going to have to keep working. Going through that wilderness, through our pilgrimage, we're going to continue to have to labor. We're going to have to apply what we know more so in those times than what we're doing now. You see? You know? It says, for he that is... Like it. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest, right? Unless if you don't, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You see? The same example of unbelief. You know, but Lord willing, this lesson was that a fine one to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Chakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, man, a great millstone. And peace and blessings to all you Akim out there who pushing this word with all truth and sincerity to you believers out there who believe in on the gospel, man. Hey, and with that, hey, Shalom.